guys, it's Amanda Love Santos. Welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, I share DIYs and crochet tutorials to encourage your creative spirit. So today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make three different accessories that are perfect for summer. And the best part is that I'm using nothing but leftover yarn. So that was a constraint that I gave myself because I have so much leftover yarn and all these random scraps and little pieces of different colors. And I didn't know what to do with them. I didn't want to throw yarn away and it ending up in a landfill. Might as well use it for something useful, something that you would actually go out and buy because it's that cute. Um, that's how I feel about each one of these pieces. So I hope you guys like these summer accessories and I would love to know like what's your go-to accessory for the summer. What is that one piece that you just keep using time and time again and it never gets old? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Now let's get started with the tutorial. So to get started on our earrings, we're going to be using this 3.75 millimeter hook and a number four worsted weight yarn. We're going to start off with a slip knot. Now you want to make sure that the tail is at least seven or eight inches long. Then once you have your slip knot, this is all going to be worked in rounds. So we're going to start off by chaining four. And this first chain of these four chains is going to be where we're going to work our double crochets into. And then the next three chains, those are going to count as our first double crochet. So from here, we're going to double crochet seven times into that first chain. So you should have eight double crochets total with those first three chains counting as a double crochet. And then we're going to finish off the first round by doing a slip stitch into those three chains from the beginning of the round. Then to start off our second round, we're going to chain one. And then that first chain is going to count as a single crochet. And then we're going to single crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to single crochet into every stitch in this round. Then once you single crochet all the way around, you should have eight single crochets total. Again, the first chain did count as a single crochet, so make sure you keep that in mind. And then to finish off the second round, we're going to do a slip stitch, but we're going to do the slip stitch coming from the front to the back. So I'm just going to find that very first chain, which is right here. Then I'm going to take the working loop and I'm going to put it on my hook and bring it through from the front to the back. Now from there we're going to chain two and then we're going to fasten off but make sure that you leave a tail of like seven or eight inches. Then we're going to pull the yarn through and just push down those two chains where it's nice and secure. So this is what it looks like once you fasten off. Now we're gonna make the tassel part of the earring. Now to create the tassel, I'm gonna use this two by three and a half inch card that I have. It's just like a regular size card. And I'm gonna take my yarn and I'm gonna wrap it around the card 15 times. Once you've wrapped the yarn around this card 15 times, then you're going to take a yarn needle and you're going to take the piece that we just completed in the last step and you're going to take the tail that we just fastened off. This is what we're going to use to connect the tassel to this part. But before we connect it, we're going to need to bring this tail and bring it through 
the stitch right next to it so here is the stitch that it's coming out of you're going to bring it through the stitch right next to it and through only the back loop Then we're going to take our wrapped yarn and we're going to bring our yarn needle behind all of the wrapped yarn. You're going to pull it through so now that you brought it behind the wrapped yarn we're going to take our yarn needle and we're going to bring that tail through one more stitch and that's going to be the stitch right next to it, but through the back loop only. You're gonna tighten that as much as you can. And then this is where we're gonna take our scissors and we're going to just cut off the yarn from the, from the card. So just put it in between the yarn and the card and just cut it. Now you can remove the card. Here's our tail that's holding this all together. So make sure it doesn't come loose. And you're just gonna tighten it up as much as you can. So make sure that's nice and tight, as tight as you can get it, but it's still not secure. So we're going to have to bring it through another stitch so I'm just going to pick a stitch that's close by then I'm going to bring it through that stitch again and bring it through another stitch close by and here I'm going to start tying a knot And then just to make sure it's super secure, I'm gonna tie another knot. Then once it's secure and you've tied your knots, then you can bring it through this same loop that's holding all the other tassels and just pull it down so that it becomes part of the tassel. All right, so this is what it looks like so far. And right, now we're gonna focus on cleaning up this tassel part. So I'm gonna take a comb, just a regular comb, and I'm gonna comb out these little strands here in the tassel. Now you want to make sure that you're holding that middle part, that little loop that's keeping everything together because you can accidentally pull the strands through. So just kind of hold the middle and just be gentle while you're combing it. And this is going to make the strings a little less chunky and more like, it'll look more like a tassel, like a cleaner tassel. Um, but as you can see, it's kind of wavy once you undo it because it's been wound up into you know an actual piece of yarn so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of water the front and the back just a little bit and then comb it through and it'll start to straighten it out Right now once the strands are pretty straight now we're just going to clean up the bottom by trimming it with scissors all right now here's what it looks like once you've cleaned up the tassel now the last step is to add the fish hook for the earring so we're gonna do that using this tail here so that tail is coming from the middle where we began and we need it to come to the top so that we can put on our fish hook 
So I'm gonna bring this tail with my yarn needle through some stitches to lead us right to this middle stitch at the top. All right, so I brought it through that top middle stitch. Now I'm going to bring it through the fish hook. And then now I'm going to bring that tail through the stitch right next to it, to the back. Obviously you want to make sure that the part that you put into your ear is facing the back as well. And then to secure it, I'm going to do the same thing that we did earlier with the tassel and I'm just going to bring it through the stitch right next to it. Bring it through that stitch again and tie a knot. And then tie another knot. And then with that loose end, I'm just going to try to weave it in to some stitches. Just so it doesn't go loose. So once you've brought it through enough stitches, you can just go ahead and trim it off. So that completes the tasseled earring. I'm going to repeat the same thing and make a second one. Now for the scrunchie, we're going to use just a regular size scrunchie and we're going to use this 3.75 millimeter hook and a number three light worsted weight yarn. Now we're going to start off with a slip knot. And this whole scrunchie is going to be worked in rounds, so we're going to start off with 15 chains. Once you have 15 chains, we're going to connect the ends around the hairband. So I'm just going to pull one of the ends through the hairband. And then you're going to slip stitch into that very first chain. You want to make sure that the chains are all facing the same direction. If that makes any sense. Make sure it's not like twisted or reversed. So I'm just going to insert my hook into that very first chain and do a slip stitch. That's going to let us do like this encasing around the entire hairband. So from there, we're going to chain three and these first three chains are going to count as a double crochet. Now we're going to double crochet into the next stitch and each stitch all the way around. Then once you've double crocheted all the way around, you should have a total of 15 double crochets. And again, that is counting these first three chains. Now we're going to finish off this round by just slip stitching into those first three chains. And then we're going to start off the new round the same way that we started the previous round. So we're just going to chain three, double crochet into the next stitch. And then double crochet all the way around until you reach where you started. And then once you have 15 double crochets total, you're just going to connect and finish off the round the same way that you did the previous round with a slip stitch. And then one tip that I do have for you guys is to weave in this loose end early on like right now I'm gonna go in and weave it in 
before I continue because it does kind of get it just keeps going around and it kind of gets tangled so I'd rather just have it out of the way Once that tail is out of the way, I'm just going to continue adding rounds until it gives it more of a ruffled effect. So I'll show you guys what it looks like once I've completed my rounds and how many rounds I actually did. Alright, so I continued adding more rounds of 15 double crochets in each round and then as you add more and more, it'll start to get a little bit ruffly. That's exactly what you want for your scrunchie and honestly I ran out of yarn unless I'd probably add a few more rows. I finished at 34 rounds of 15 double crochets and to finish it off, we're going to connect the very first round with the very last round using a round of slip stitches so really the main tip that i have is to line up those chain threes from both of those rounds from the from the last round and from the first round just line them up and just go stitch for stitch so i'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch on both sides and then just do a slip stitch and then I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch and again do a slip stitch and just keep the stitches aligned and just slip stitch all the way around Then once you've slip stitched all the way around, then you can just fasten off. And then lastly, I'm going to use my yarn needle and just hide this loose end. Now I'm going to show you guys how to upcycle these super worn out, beat up beach sandals that I have. And I'm going to do this using my 3.75 millimeter hook and a number 4 worsted weight yarn. So you could probably use a different weight yarn if you'd like. I haven't tried it, but I imagine it would work. So to begin, I'm going to start with a slip knot. And then I'm going to work single crochets all the way across these straps. So I'm going to start in this corner over here and I'm going to take my slip knot and put it behind the strap. And then just slide it as close as you can to the corner. And then from there I'm going to start with a slip stitch. So I'm just going to yarn over and bring it through that slip knot. Then this is where we're going to start our single crochets. So I'm going to go under the strap, yarn over, bring it around, and then I'm going to yarn over again and bring it through both loops on my hook. And you're just going to continue that. So you're going to go under the strap, yarn over. Now you have two loops on your hook, 
yarn over again and bring it through both loops. So depending on how much you want to see the strap through your single crochets, then you may want to scoot them a little bit closer together or if you just like it um, the way it comes out, then you don't have to do that at all. So we're going to just continue single crocheting all the way across the strap. Then once you get to the area where both of the straps meet, we're just going to cross over to the other side. So there's really nothing to it. We're just doing the same thing, but now we're doing it on the other side. Then when you come to the end of the strap, you're just going to try to get as close as you can to the corner. Then once you get as close as you can to the corner, then I'm just going to fasten off. Now for the next part, we're going to add some detail to our single crochet. So to this top part that looks like a little braid, we're gonna take our yarn needle and just weave in a different color through that braid. Since this is all about using leftover yarn scraps, I'm going to take this golden beige color that is also a number four weight yarn, um, and I'm just going to feed it into my yarn needle. Alright, so I have my yarn needle and my second color of yarn and I just want to explain really quickly the makeup of this stitch. So we have the front loop right here and then this is the back loop and we want to insert our needle right in the middle of those two. Then you want to bring it underneath and into the next stitch right in the middle of the front and the back loop. And then we're going to pull that through about 25 inches just to give us some extra room to hide the ends later. And then I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to insert my hook into the next stitch in between the front and the back loop, bring it under and into the next stitch right in the middle of that stitch. Pull it through and when you're pulling it through, just make sure you're a little bit gentle because if you pull it too tight, this little accent stitch is going to get really tight and it's going to be kind of hidden. So you definitely don't want that. And we're just going to continue doing the same thing. So just in and out of the middle of the stitches. Alright, so now we're going to weave in these loose ends. So I'm going to start by just tying a knot between these two colors because this end is still not secure, so that's the way that I'm going to secure it. You do want to be gentle with the accent color because it, if you do pull it too tight, it'll just, it'll just tighten up the whole strand so just be gentle don't pull it too tight until until you have your double knot so now this strand the accent strand is secure so now we can hide the tail so I'm just gonna use a yarn needle once again 
and what I'm gonna do I'm actually going to hide it behind this single crochet so I'm just going to bring it underneath all of these stitches as many as I can pull it up through then I'm gonna bring it across and I want it to catch on a stitch underneath so I'm just gonna bring it underneath this front and back loop and since it's right next to this little accent right here you're not gonna be able to notice just like that and then I am going to bring it underneath these stitches again since now it's caught on one of those um, loops and just bring it all the way back down and then just kind of lightly pull on it and then now you can just cut this off so it's really not going anywhere and you really can't see it so that's that's good now this one is brown so I'm gonna do the same exact thing and that's gonna be even more invisible because it's brown and it blends in So that's how you hide all the loose ends and I'm going to do the same exact thing to the other side and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's complete. So I repeated everything on the second flip flop and this is what it looks like when it's all completed. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you guys as best as I can. And I do have a quote of the, well, not technically a quote. I was looking for a quote that would go along with what I've been feeling or what I've been reflecting on lately. Couldn't really find one, but I'm not gonna let that stop me from talking about it. So I've been reflecting on things and I was really thinking about these moments or these times in my life where I was pursuing something but I I didn't pursue it like 100% and I have many examples of this but without going too far into them because that could be a whole that could be a whole video on its own um, I think we all have these times where we're pursuing something we don't give it our all and we tend to look back on them and be like oh wow like it could have been really great you know in that area or it didn't like reach my potential there and it's not something i look back on and regret because of those decisions that i've made i am who i am today and i am where i am today and i love my life i realize that every single day we have that decision are we going to give it our all or are we going to not you know there really is no in between and i realize that now in my 26 years of life looking back on certain time periods of my life where i didn't give it 100 percent and i don't want to be i don't know whatever age and look back at this age right now and realize like oh wow i didn't give it 100 percent I didn't give it my all. So it's not a feeling that I want to relive. I want to learn from my past. I want to really put everything that I have into my goals and the dreams that I have. So I feel very motivated because I feel like I have a second chance. Every single day that I wake up is a second chance. And if you woke up this morning, you have a second chance too to pursue whatever's been on your mind, whatever dreams that you have or that thing that you just that you can't get out of your mind that vision that you have like don't sleep on it anymore don't give it 80 percent 90 percent 95 percent give it 100 percent and i don't mean this in the way that you shouldn't have balance or you shouldn't have rest but that way you don't look back and wonder what it could have been and never know you know because that's that's not a good feeling and i don't want to look back and wonder what could this have been i don't want that so 
yeah that's the feeling that I've been having <laughs> could definitely go on for a long time but uh, I think you guys get the point hopefully and that is to give it your all whatever it is whatever facet of your life that may be whether it's your career whether it's your faith whether it's a relationship um, your education personal development just give it your all and know that I encourage you guys I am rooting for every single one of you guys I believe in you and whatever it is that you are trying to achieve and I will see you guys on my next video bye